Chapter 61 Fire Demon Dungeon Part 5 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Alright then. Let's go in. After hearing Brian's reassurance, George also agreed. Five of them slowly entered the second level. But unlike the first level, the second level was very different. It wasn't exactly a room but rather a hole and there was a bridge. But, this wasn't the only bridge. There were dozens of bridges above them and only at the top, there was a hole that leads to the third level. Seeing this, Dave couldn't help but turned his eyes at Brian and asked, Did you really have to make it so difficult? Brian rolled his eyes but didn't reply. Slowly, the fire demons started emerging on each bridge. There were almost 20 to 30 on each bridge making it extremely difficult to reach the top. He turned around and hurriedly spoke. Tempest, you stay behind. You will be responsible for supporting us. Dave, this time, go wild. Use berserker blood together with hammer of madness continuously. George, don't use your fire skill instead use your class ability. As for Shirley, this time you need to do something out of the box. Whenever we learn a skill, we learn how it is used. So, use the yellow lightning but in the way you use spirit bomb. And, I will stay closer to Tempest in case anything bad happens. Let's go. Here I go. Dave roared gathering everyone's attention to him. His berserker blood was activated. Channeling mana into his hammer, he swings his arm. Bang, zero. His hammer struck the fire demon as if he was striking a home run, sending him flying. The fire demon took down a few more fire demons while flying away. Some of the fire demons fell off the bridge while some remained on the bridge. Hammer of Madness As soon as he finished that attack, he stomped his foot on the ground and jumped. He launched his hammer down towards the dozens of fire demons. But, those fire demons dodged the attack and his hammer struck the bridge. Bang! When others saw it, except for Brian, everyone else was shocked. They were wondering why Brian didn't want them to destroy the bridge and teleport to another bridge. But, it turns out that even with Hammer of Madness, Dave can't make a dent on this bridge. BVEC, alright. I know how Spirit Bomb works. I know. Connecting different particles of mana to create a sphere. But, how the heck does that explode? No, he knows that I am not that smart. So, he must have thought of another way to use my yellow lightning. Wait a minute, my yellow lightning is already destructive. I just need to combine the yellow lightning into a sphere. Alright. Let's do it. Shirley closed her eyes and opened her palms. They faced each other and she activated her yellow lightning skill. But, this time, she controlled her yellow lightning, and instead of charging it out at once, she slowly let her yellow lightning move, oh. At this moment, she realized that when she was trying to control the speed of the yellow lightning, she is able to control its flow as well. She slowly circled with the yellow lightning coming out of her left hand. Then, she connected the inner part of that lightning with the yellow lightning coming out of her right hand. Then, she rolled it in opposite direction to the lightning coming out of her left hand. Slowly, two same lightning started circling from different directions, creating a strange yet perfect circle. Wow! I thought she would simply try to merge her yellow lightning to make it bigger and then shape it but this is amazing. Now if she uses this sphere, she won't just add the total destruction yellow lightning can cause, it will multiply. I bet it would be four times stronger than yellow lightning. Brian was in awe when he saw that. He didn't expect Shirley to come up with such a plan. He sighed and turned around. At this moment, George was already using his class ability continuously, consuming his mana and slashing fire demons to death. This is looking good but we are consuming too much mana. If we don't finish this quickly, then we won't make it to the next level. It seems like I need to cheat once again. Brian took a deep breath and walked towards Tempest. Teleport me to the second bridge as soon as they finish here. And, after that, teleport them and yourself to the second bridge. 
continue this process without looking at my condition, understanding. Hearing the sharp tone from Brian, Tempest panicked. Don't worry, I have a way to fix my problems later. But for now, I need to do something and you need to help me do this thing. Brian's words finally reassured him and Tempest closed his eyes. As he entered a meditation state, Shirley threw her lightning sphere at the group of fire demons. Bang! As soon as the lightning sphere struck one of the fire demons, the sparks of yellow lightning spread out extremely fast, piercing the bodies of the fire demons. And, when those lightning sparks came out, the entire sphere expanded until almost every fire demon was caught inside it. Fortunately, Tempest had already teleported Dave out of the influence of the sphere. After the lightning sphere extinguished, everyone looked at the bodies of fire demons laying on the ground. Some had holes on their chest, some had holes on their head, and some had holes where they should be. The blood coming out of their bodies covered that part of the bridge, oh. Seeing this, everyone turned their heads at Shirley. Their mouth was wide open. Even Brian was no exception. But, he quickly changed his plan and whispered next to Tempest. Change of plan. No self.sacrifice, Tempest also nodded his head with his mouth opened wide. Everyone was shocked by the powers of those lightning bolts. Do you know how that worked? Dave turned his head at Brian and asked. I would very much like to explain it but shouldn't we go up and finish them? Since we have this attack, let's change the strategy. Surely, once we reach up, you focus on it and signal us. We will get out of the way and let you finish it, Brian spoke. Shirley nodded her head and asked, can I ask you something? Yes. Brian nodded his head. I noticed something. This game looks more like a training arena for us. Is that how it was designed? Shirley asked. Her question made everyone wonder the same thing. Brian shook his head and said, actually, this is truly a game, like a literal game. Yes, there are things that normal games can't achieve but you have to understand something. This game is made in order to company exist with zero dot point energy. And, the purpose of zero dot point energy is to evolve anything it merges with. That's how vampires and others get stronger. Initially, it was a complete game. The level system, the guild system, map, and dungeons, everything was just a game. But, when we merged this game with zero dot point energy, it evolved. NPCs, the monsters, the dungeons, and even the world itself are evolving. But of course, the game is designed that way. I mean nobody could create a game where you can go in and get stronger. That's not possible. What we did was use science. Science doesn't create things. It proves things. We found a way to prove that technology can work together with something we perceive as magic. We didn't create this amazing training arena. We create a game. Then, we merge that game with self.existing magic known as zero.point energy and then we got new gods. There will be many differences between the game and the real world. For example, Tempest can't even use normal elements outside the game. He has gotten a bit stronger but that's it. He does have a lot of mana but that's it. He can't use the mana as he wishes in the real world. But, as he continues to level up inside new gods, his real body will change and one day he will be able to control the creation. Bookworm is known as the most broken class in UMA. But, still nobody understands its value because the drawbacks are insane. Of course, if it didn't have these drawbacks, UMA wouldn't let us include such broken class in the game. Hearing his words, everyone gasped and looked at Tempest. They already know that Tempest was an overpowered player with his broken class. But, the more they hear about his class, the more they regret not choosing it. Don't feel bad. Even if you had chosen it, you could never use this class as professionally as he did. That's why I didn't choose this class. Do you think you can read millions of books stored inside the libraries? Tempest doesn't level up like us. He needs to read. 
But, of course, he can still earn EXP and use EXP for something else, isn't that right? Chapter 62 Fire Demon Dungeon Part 6 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Tempest nodded his head and said, Indeed. I can use EXP to improve my skills. It's the same as skill upgrade rune but a little worse. Well, I wouldn't call it worse if you can literally earn it by killing monsters. Brian was a little speechless when Tempest compared his special EXP to skill upgrade rune. Wait, how many skills do you have? George suddenly interrupted and asked with confusion in his eyes. He has seen Tempest using several skills. Everything I create can be a skill but it's not a skill that gets recognized by the system like his. After all, I am just using my own class to create a skill that fits my class. I am not going out of the box. So, even though my attacks were powerful, it wouldn't get recognized as a skill by the system. Though I can upgrade them since they show up my status as skills. And, do you know? I can use those skills in the real world. I have successfully leveled up a skill, heal, to LVL.5 and now I can use it to heal people in the real world. Tempest gleefully explained. He was really happy that he chose this class. Of course, he also understands the difficulty of this class. If you can't read, you won't be able to do all that fun stuff. So, you must continuously read. I really envy your class. But then again, if I had chosen it, I could never be good as you. I couldn't even read the textbook during my school life. How could I ever read millions of books? Dave sighed bitterly. Yeah. How do you actually make time to read? You play with us at least eight hours a day but you still manage to level up. George suspiciously glanced at him and asked. Hearing his words, Brian's eyes suddenly narrowed. He looked at Tempest and said, don't tell me you modified your pod. Tempest immediately raised his hands and spoke, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. I wanted to read while playing and since our consciousness is split in half while we are inside the game, I used this chance to continue my reading. What does that even mean? Science please. Shirley looked at Brian and asked. Brian slapped his forehead and sighed, he is playing with his brain. Normally, whenever we enter the pod, it splits our consciousness into two. One consciousness enters the game and another consciousness sleeps. This is why we can play this game for days without taking any rest. But, he modified the pod and inserted a separate protocol that sends the text of the books into his second consciousness which was supposed to be asleep. Zero. It is a technique created a decade ago to use the human brain continuously in order to gain more knowledge. But, the side effects are severe, one might lose his personality, drown in madness and even lose his brain. Suddenly, Tempest interrupted, not if we sleep in another time. But, wouldn't that make things the same? Why would need to read like that if you still sleep later? Shirley looked at him with confusion and asked. Instead of Tempest, Brian replied, it's because reading is sleep is twice as effective. At that moment, our brain is completely isolated from everything else. It's like having two XEXP card and inside a dungeon full of monsters. Oh, so, you are basically cheating as well. Dave glared at Tempest and spoke coldly. What do you mean as well? Brian looked at Dave and asked. Dave rolled his eyes and said, you are basically cheating everywhere. Brian shrugged his shoulders and rebuked I am not cheating. Yes, you are. Everyone responded at the same time. No, no, you don't understand. I am not cheating. Brian smirked gleefully and said, I am a cheat. When four of them heard his words, they rolled their eyes. Brian wasn't really cheating but his existence in the game was a cheat. After all, he was the one who created this game. Even though he can't simply just level up to LVL.100 at once, he still has a lot of shortcuts and secret knowledge. Anyway, let's go up and clear this dungeon. Brian walked towards the other side of the bridge and pulled a lever. Crack. Crack. Crack, 
O. Suddenly, a long stair emerged from the second bridge and connect to the first bridge. Seeing this, George looked at Brian and asked, So, we can't just teleport to the top, can we? Brian shook his head and they climbed up the stairs. As soon as one of them stepped on the second floor, the fire demons charged toward them. Brian stopped them and took out two of his swords. He released his hidden attribute and the dark mana emerged out of his hands, slowly coating his swords. Surely, Tempest, get ready. Saying so, Brian dashed towards the fire demons with the dark swords. The mana wasn't just coating his swords but also infusing inside them to enhance their durability. Modified Version, First Stance Dark Dragon Twister Whoosh Whoosh Splash 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 His upper body swung as well as his swords. The dark swords conjured the dark tornado around him, swallowing the fire demons into the tornado and cutting their bodies. In less than ten seconds, the tornado vanished but at the same time, ten of the fire demons died while five of them fell down from the bridge. Teleport Yellow Lightning Sphere Suddenly, Brian's figure blurred as he disappeared from the middle of the fire demons and a large ball of yellow lightning moved toward the fire demons. Bang! Splash! 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 The sphere of yellow lightning slowly expanded, swallowing those fire demons inside the constant flow of lightning bolts at an incredible speed. After 10 seconds, the yellow light sphere vanished and 15 bodies fell to the ground. All of them were dead. Brian turned his eyes at her and asked, how much MP does it cost? Half. Shirley turned serious when she replied. Brian nodded his head and said, consume our mana restoration potion to recover. Until we reach the third level, we shouldn't use power potion and haste potion. All right. Saying so, she asked for a mana restoration potion from Brian and drank it. Brian was speechless when he was the one who had to spend the mana restoration potion. After restoring her mana, Brian pulled the liver and they climbed up. Dave, it's your turn this time. Brian wanted to use the dark mana but his body wasn't ready for it. He was in a weakened state and he didn't recover with healing potion. Dave nodded his head and pounced towards them. He instantly used his hundred hammer strike and managed to distract all of those fire demons. Finally, Shirley used her yellow lightning sphere and finished them. They continued like this until they killed all 200 fire demons. Their EXP exploded to the roof. After finishing the second level, they all rested outside the hole. They wanted to make sure that they were ready to face off the third floor. In New Gods, leveling up as they go higher is really hard. So, the potions were very important to them. If they don't have enough potions, they won't able to kill hundreds of thousands of monsters and level up. It was the only way. In New Gods, killing more monsters was the only way to improve. Brian sat at the corner and opened his status. Name. Dragon Rider 97 Race. Human Level. 12 HP, 65 65 Cursed. 88% Stamina, MP 65 65 XP. 71500-81920 Class. Warlock STR, 65-AGI. 65 slash vit 65 stm 65 slash int 65 slash magic 20 warlock active abilities warlock cursed hands lv.1 passive abilities warlock mental fortitude lv.1 skills dragon rider 97 sword art lv.5 shadow escape lv.1 Slaughtering Crows, LV.1, Thunderbolt, LV.2, SP, 50 Gods Coin. 1487 Inventory. Boar Bones, 2 Picks, Poison Sack, Token for Sub, Class, Swords, 2, Healing Potions, 12, Mana Restoration Potion, 
4, Power Potion, 1, and Haste Potion, 1, I really need to stack up against my inventory next time, especially with potions. By the way, I haven't used the Poison Sack till now. Is there anything I can do with Poison Sack right now? Item Poison Sack Description It contains a deadly poison that comes from the belly of Poison Spider. Effect 1 it can be merged with other ingredients to create a poison potion effect too. It is deadly against anyone under LVL.20 effect 3. If it is used for mass, then it can affect up to 100 people within LVL.20, note. Poison inside the sack is in liquid form, liquid form. Wait, what if we change its form into a gas? But we need something to protect ourselves. Suddenly, Brian's eyes fell on Tempest. And, we have a perfect person for this. Brian called everyone near him and started explaining his plan. In the third level, there will be 400 fire demons and the fire demon lord. How about we work on something to decrease the number? Like how? Dave looked at him and asked. Chapter 63 Fire Demon Dungeon Part 7 You are listening at novelfull.audio Tempest, you can create a mana barrier right? Brian ignored Dave and asked Tempest. Oh, Tempest nodded his head and Brian continued, all right then. We will use a little bit of chemistry here. Tempest, I want you to create mana barrier around all of us. It needs to be fully airproof. Once you do that, George will use his fire skill to heat up the poison I have. The poison is in liquid form which means if we heat it until it evaporates, the poison will spread out. Then, I can use the dragon twister to guide the poison gas inside the third level and use it against the fire demons. We won't be able to kill everyone but the number will decrease by a hundred and the effect of poison will vanish. But, mana barrier won't work if you use dragon twister. Tempest interrupted. Yes, but I don't need a mana barrier when I use Dragon Twister. I can manipulate the wind around me to contain the poison in it. Brian replied. But, Warlock's weakness is poison. Even if it doesn't reach you, it will still affect you. Tempest shook his head and responded. Then, do you have any other plans? Brian sighed and asked. He was indeed taking a risk but the risk was worth it. If he kills 100 fire demons, he can level up before facing other fire demons. I think I might have a solution. Shirley slowly raised her hand and spoke. Yes. Brian looked at her with surprise and asked. After creating the poison gas, I might be able to use my mana to contain it inside the spirit bomb. After all, spirit bomb is like a sphere of wind but that wind is mana. And unlike you, my mana barrier won't disappear while I use Spirit Bomb. Hearing her words, Brian was slightly stunned. In fact, he was only stunned because Shirley came up with such a brilliant idea. But, his eyes narrowed down a little as he asked, Are you sure you can control your Spirit Bomb well? Shirley shook her head and said, I am not sure but it is my class ability and I have used it a lot. Now that I also created Yellow Lightning Sphere, I feel like I can control it better. All right then. Brian immediately took out the sack of poison and looked at Tempest. He took a deep breath and closed his eyes. A few seconds later, a green barrier emerged around everyone. It was quite the shape of an egg but mana could still go out, zero. Of course, mana can't come in. It was designed in such a way. After getting his signal, George took out his sword and activated his skill. His mana burst out in the form of red flames and covered his sword. Boom. George charged a lot of mana into his sword and the flames just exploded out of his sword. Since George can't break the barrier with his sword, he can only let the flames out by overusing his mana. Brian put the poison sack at the stone and George started burning it. The entire poison sack disappeared into the poisonous vapor in less than two minutes. Suddenly, a layer of mana flowed around the poisonous vapor and the vapor followed the mana's direction. It made a circle and returned to Shirley. 
she was constantly releasing her mana to spin the poisonous vapor into a ball of poisonous wind. It actually worked. But, Shirley was sweating a lot. The level of concentration to manipulate something else through her mana was hard especially when she hasn't done it before. Thanks to the barrier, even if there was poisonous vapor left in the surrounding, it wouldn't matter to them. Finally, Brian led the team inside the hole. When they reached at the end of the hole, they saw a huge army of fire demons on one corner, talking, drinking, and doing a lot of different stuff like humans. Brian turned around and asked, how far can you send this poisonous bomb? How about calling it poison cannonball? Dot? Suddenly, Dave interrupted with a proud tone. Both of them ignored him. Shirley looked at the distance between them and the fire demons. She shook her head and said, they are too far away. I can only send it to the middle. Hmm Tempest, have you ever done multiple skill tricks? Brian looked at Tempest and asked. Tempest nodded his head like a puppy, full of excitement. Good, then you will maintain the barrier while teleporting someone back here. And, that someone would be Dave. He will go out and use his hundred hammer strikes to attract the enemy towards him. At that moment, Shirley will throw her poisonous cannonball and you will teleport Dave here. Can you do it? Brian asked, oh. Tempest nodded his head with a determined expression. Why do I feel like you are doing everything to impress him? Dave looked at Tempest with a suspicious gaze and asked. But, Tempest turned shy about this question. Brian patted Dave's shoulder and said, All right, it's your turn to show some madness. Since you called it poisonous cannonball, I shall show you something new today. Dave proudly smiled and walked towards the fire demon. Although he was visible and not that far from them, none of the fire demons noticed until he reached the middle of the room. This giant room was almost a hundred determiners from one end to another. So, even though they noticed him, they were still far. Dave took a deep breath and suddenly roared. His mana burst out and condensed an image of a giant warrior in armor behind him. This image filled him with intense strength. Class ability. Berserker soul. Bang. He stomped his foot on the ground and flew tens of meters in the air. He exchanged his normal hammer for the size of a giant hammer. The fire demons crowded in front of him. Finally, he held the hammer tightly and slammed it on the fire demons, but in less than a mini dot second, he slammed it again. Hundred hammer strike. Bang. 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 In less than four seconds, he slammed his hammer twenty times and killed nearly twenty of the fire demons, scattering many others. Surely now. Brian instructed Shirley and she shot her poisonous cannonball towards Dave. At this moment, nearly 380 fire demons were getting closer to him. Teleport. Boom. BVEC Dave's figure slowly blurred and the next moment, he appeared behind Tempest while the poisonous cannonball struck the fire demon and exploded. That explosion spread out the poisonous gas. Thud. 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 Just as the system suggested, 100 fire demons died and their EXP just exploded. At this moment, Dave, Shirley, George, and Brian got the notification panels in front of them at the same time. Your EXP is full, you leveled up, you obtained 10 SP, in less than 10 seconds, four of the level up. Shirley and George reached LVL.17. Dave reached LVL.16 and Brian reached LVL. 13. Without any hesitation, Brian opened up his status. Name. Dragon Rider 97 Race. Human Level. 13 HP, 70 70ths, Cursed. 88% Stamina, MP 70 70ths XP. 7580-163840 class. Warlock STR 70-AGI. 70-VIT. 70-STM. 70-INT. 
70 slash magic. 20, warlock, active abilities, warlock. Cursed hands, LV.1, passive abilities, warlock. Mental fortitude, LV.1, skills. Dragon Rider 97 Sword Art, LV.5, Shadow Escape, LV.1, Slaughtering Crows, LV.1, Thunderbolt, LV.2, SP, 60 Gods Coin. 1487 Inventory. Boar Bones, 2 Picks, Poison Sack, Token for Sub, Class, Swords, 2, Healing Potions, 12, Mana Restoration Potion, 4, Power Potion, 1, and haste potion, 1, ugh. Every time I look at the exp number, it hurts my head. Just how are we going to level up like this? Dave looked at his own status and shouted in dissatisfaction. That's why we made dungeons. Let's go and level up. Brian took out two potions and instantly drank them without hesitation. Your str stat has been doubled, time limit. Two minutes. Your AGI stat has reached 80, temporary, time limit. 2 minutes, alright everyone, use everything you got at once. Brian shouted and 5 of them rushed towards the hordes of fire demons who were also rushing towards them. Class ability. Berserker Soul, 100 Hammer Strike. Dave took the lead with his hammer. George followed behind him with deadly sword skill, cutting them into pieces. Shirley shot dozens of yellow lightning bolts at them, Tempest condensed a few swords and shot at them. As for Brian, he released his dark attribute instantly. His strength was doubled and the power in his arms has increased by a lot. His speed was faster as well. Brian narrowed his eyes looking at the horde of fire demons and his lips curled. A new idea emerged in mind that he was dying to taste. System, use 30 SP in magic. In less than 10 seconds, he reached the middle of the fire demons. He kicked the ground and jumped high in the air. Suddenly, his dark mana formed an illusion behind him but it wasn't an illusion. A demon-headed figure with hundred arms appeared behind him, each arm holding a sword. At this moment, the dark mana reached out to his eyes, turning them purplish. When he opened his eyes and his body fell, the demon with hundred arms slashed a hundred swords. Fourth Stance Hundred Arms Azura, I am planning on writing an auxiliary chapter explaining everything about new gods. Would you like to read it? Chapter 64, Bonus Chapter, Fire Demon Dungeon Part 8 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Splash 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 Nearly fifty fire demons were slaughtered at once but before he landed on the ground, he put one of his swords into inventory and held the hilt of his only sword. Modified Version, Third Stance Thunder Dragon Stomp, the mana transformed into the lightning bolts and emerged out of him but this time, it was dark purple. The lightning bolts gathered at his sword. When he landed on the ground, he pierced the ground with his sword. Bang! 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 In the next second, nearly twenty fire demons died at his hand. His attacks were so severe that the fire demons changed their target. They weren't just simple NPCs. They were monsters evolved by zero dot point energy. They know what fear is. If it wasn't for the codes restricting their freedom, they might not even attack players. But, this was also a foolish move. Because at this moment, Brian was weakened. The cost of using hidden attributes almost forced him to kneel. But, he still held on to his sword and turned his head at Dave. A gleeful smile appeared on his lips as he looked at Dave. It didn't go unnoticed by them. George, Shirley, and Tempest didn't care but Dave did. Brian stole his move and made it his own and even do it better than him. He can't form phantoms with hundred arms as Brian can. He can't control his mana properly. On other hand, Brian just used 30 SP on his magic to increase his control over mana. If magicians and warlocks have the high mana control from the start, then using SP to increase it just pushes it to a whole new level. 
This is why Brian was able to condense a hundred phantoms with his mana amount and create a devastating attack. But, suddenly, a notification appeared in front of him and startled him. Your magic stat has reached 50, your thunderbolt skill has leveled up, asterisk 4. 0, your shadow escape skill has leveled up, asterisk 4, your slaughtering crow's skill has leveled up, asterisk 4, skill. Thunderbolt, maxed, type. Magic mana consumption. 2 description. This basic skill transforms the player's mana into a bolt of lightning and strikes his enemy. The closer the distance, the more damage it can cause. Additional effect. Control over lightning mana, skill. Shadow escape, maxed, type. Magic mana consumption. 1 description. Releasing the dark magic from your feet, you can conjure your own shadow and manipulate it for an immense boost in speed. Skill. Slaughtering crows, maxed, type. Summoning mana consumption. 2, O. Oh. Description. Using the dark magic, host can summon the crows of the netherworld. These crows have the deadliest poison all over their bodies and just a single touch is enough to kill a person. Number of crows. 2 MP, 3 crows, 4 MP, 6 crows, 6 MP, 9 crows, 8 MP, 12 crows, 10 MP, 15 crows, seriously. They added this function as well. How the hell did they manage to slide in such effect without the firewall noticing it? Wait, don't tell me they convinced UMA. No. Maybe they did sneak this function into new gods by compromising it in another way. But, then what could it be? Brian started panicking at this moment. He doesn't like it when things don't go his way. And, at this moment, it seemed like that was the case indeed. Hey, don't lose focus in the middle of the battle. Bang. Suddenly, Dave rushed next to him and slammed his hammer towards the right, striking nearly dozens of fire demons at once. Brian immediately woke up from his thoughts and took out his other sword. He released his mana into those swords and suddenly, he felt a strange power inside him. It was gushing out of his sword but in a mild manner. It was like water. But, when it did come out, he noticed a strange change in his attack. His swords turned invisible. He was stunned because he knew what move he was going to use and that's what confused him. Stealth Dragon Claw Suddenly, he felt his legs floating in the air. The mana reached out to his leg on its own and his sword spun like a fan until his body passed between them like a tornado. Splash 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 Brian stopped and looked back. Those swords had already stopped moving and the instability was already off. He couldn't help but feel astounded when he looked back. The bodies of fire demons lay on the ground with their bodies split in half. At the same time, he noticed his strength and agility decreasing rapidly. He found that the effect of those potions has worn off. But, he still didn't understand how he did that. That attack felt so advanced that only a true swordsman could perform it. And, it was also the correct way to use his sword in that stance. It's just that he didn't expect his mana to forcefully correct his attack. Suddenly, his mana tingled inside his body and erupted out to his right side. This time, it wasn't normal mana. It was the dark mana but it wasn't because he used the hidden cheat. His mana had started transforming into the dark mana. At this moment, he didn't know whether to feel emotional or happy. He was happy because he got stronger but it wasn't part of his plan. He took a deep breath and took back the mana. It was blocking the fire demon from getting near him. But, he quickly transformed his dark mana into a dark thunderbolt and strike the fire demon. This time, his thunderbolt burned the fire demon to ash. Roar. Suddenly, the ground beneath them shook as a figure landed in front of them. This figure was nearly ten feet tall and muscular. He looked like other fire demons but a lot bigger. He conjured a lot of flames into his mouth and spewed them toward Brian. 
Seeing the stream of flame, Brian used shadow escape to dodge to the right but the fire demon quickly swing his head and the fire stream followed Brian. Brian kept running until a man jumped from behind and strike the fire lord's head with his hammer. Oh, bang. Thud. When the hammer collided against his head, Dave felt his arm shaking. The fire demon closed his mouth and looked at Dave with deep red eyes. He swing his arm and slammed Dave to the walls. Damn. Guys, let's use everything we have together. Brian shouted when he saw Dave getting smashed into the wall. Dave used Hammer of Madness but even that attack didn't flinch the Fire Demon Lord. At this moment, he truly understood the horror of this Demon Lord. He conjured a lot of mana into his hand and shot five thunderbolts at the Fire Demon Lord. But, the Fire Demon Lord simply tanked those thunderbolts without suffering any damage. Seeing this, Brian panicked. He understood how the Fire Demon tanked the thunderbolt. There were seven levels of a gap between them. And the Fire Demon Lord was the leader. Yellow Lightning Sphere Roar When the Yellow Lightning Sphere came toward him, the Fire Demon Lord narrowed his eyes and conjured a massive amount of flames in his hand, shooting it out from his palm. Boom won the sphere and the flame stream collide and exploded, sending a powerful shockwave. These shockwaves were so strong that Shirley and Tempest got knocked. Seeing this, George took a deep breath and muttered. Thankfully, I saved those for last. System, put all of my SP into agility. The next moment, George's agility soared by 80 points. He gripped his sword tightly and his body suddenly vanished. He appeared behind the fire demon lord and slashed his sword. Class Ability Frenzied Sword Slash Splash Roar His sword managed to leave a sword mark but the angry fire demon lord swing his arm towards George. Fortunately, George's enough agility gave him a head start up as he kicked the back of the fire demon lord and somersaulted to the ground. Before the fire demon lord could move again, George disappeared and the next time, he appeared in front of the fire demon lord. But, when he slashed, his mana simply exploded and condensed a thick layer of sharp energy. Splash! This time his sword left a giant mark on his chest. But, the Fire Demon Lord also got an opportunity to punch while George was still in the air. Hammer of Madness. Bang! The next moment, Dave appeared next to George and slammed his hammer against the Demon Lord's army. Both Dave and George landed on the ground. The Fire Demon Lord didn't stop because of pain. He opened his mouth and released a giant stream of flame. Shadow Escape. Yellow Lightning Sphere Just when the fire was next to them, Brian picked them up and ran away. At the same time, a giant sphere of lightning struck the fire demon lord's face. Binov calm bang. Splash. Splash. The fire demon lord retreated a few steps as the dozens of lightning bolts pierced his skin but didn't reach inside his muscle. He started bleeding from his mouth. He slowly opened his eyes and those eyeballs were red. At this moment, steam came out of his body and the blood coming out of his face changed into magma that flowed down his cheek. Roar! The fire demon lord roared and the magma fell to the ground, melting the ground into flame. In front of him, Brian and his team stood in a position to attack at any moment. Alright guys, let's continue this same process. George, Distract the enemy. Dave, get ready to defend George. Shirley and I will be the main attack force. And Tempest, amplify our mana for a minute. Let's kill this guy and end this dungeon quest in one minute. Chapter 65 Fire Demon Dungeon Part 9 You are listening at novelfull.audio Whoosh! George shot toward the Fire Demon Lord with his extreme agility. This time, the fire demon lord managed to catch a gaze at him and shot out the fire bullets from his fingers. Boom. 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 Even though those bullets were fast, they weren't actual bullets and the speed was less than his. 
Dodging those bullets, George jumped and spun his body. He was on the right side of the fire demon lord and so before the fire demon lord could turn around, his sword sliced the fire demon lord's arm. Splash! 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 The overwhelming amount of mana flowing out of his sword was able to pierce his thick skin but it still wasn't enough to cut off his arm. Yo, sucker! Suddenly, a voice rang from above and startled the fire demon lord. He was trying to slap George to death but feeling an intense aura coming from above, he raised his head. Bang! A giant hammer slammed on his face, and his body flew out like a cannonball, striking against the wall. Feel that, sucker. Do you think my hammer can't injure you? Dave roared with excitement. Previously when he striked the fire demon lord with his hammer, he didn't even flinch. This made him extremely mad. Now that he succeed in making the fire demon lord fly with his hammer, he was extremely happy. Idiot. That attack didn't work. Stealth Dragon Claw. Suddenly, Brian passed next to him at an extreme speed. His body spun in mid-air and the two swords slashed the fire demon lord who had stood up on his foot, zero. Dave didn't understand until his eyes fell on the red number above fire demon lord. Because they were almost taking down their enemies with a single attack, they didn't care about that number but now seeing it, made much more sense. HP, 99%. He immediately understood what Brian meant by his attack didn't work. It only dropped to 99% because of George's lethal attack and if he hadn't stepped in like that, the HP would have reached 95%. Seeing Dave in frustration, George patted his shoulder and said. You are our guardian, our shield, act like it, protect us. Hearing his words, Dave felt even more remorse but he immediately shook his head. It was only due to the enhanced mana he got from Tempest's spell that he was able to land an attack. Oh, now, his strength has increased which means he can protect them even more. You get ready. He looked at George and spoke. Splash. Teleport. Yellow lightning sphere. As soon as Brian's attack landed, Tempest teleported him away while Shirley shot her lightning sphere. The fire demon lord didn't get a chance to counter it with his flames and ended up taking all the damage. HP, 94%, HP, 93%. HP, 90%, his HP decreased rapidly but it was still on the mark of 90. More than 30 seconds have already passed. George rushed towards the fire demon lord and stabbed his sword from behind. Roar won the fire demon lord felt angrier. He had just borne the lightning attack and now he was attacked once again. He didn't even get a chance to counter. Because the sword was stuck, George couldn't remove it at once, oh. Bang. The fire demon lord moved his fist towards George but at this moment, Dave jumped in and slammed his hammer on that fist. But, before Dave could react, fire demon lord raised another fist and smashed Dave against the wall. BDNVL.M Dave's HP fell down to 50% instantly. Splash. Teleport. George managed to take out his sword as he ran away. Tempest used the teleport to bring Dave back. And, Brian head straight toward the fire demon lord. Suddenly, his mana turned purple. It was demonic, chaotic and the illusion of the hundred arms appeared behind him. Each arm held a sword and together with Brian, they all slashed at the fire demon lord. Fourth stance. Hundred arm azura, but, the fire demon lord was also prepared. His skin melted and the blood came out like magma, covering his fist with magma. He raised his fist and slammed at Brian's real sword. Bang. Splash. 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 A hundred swords slashed at him and his fist broke Brian's real swords. He managed to push his fist until it hits Brian's chest. Whoosh. Thud. Brian's health instantly reached 30% and two broken swords fell in front of him. But, he felt his chest bone was broken and the backbone as well. 
but, he immediately took out two healing potions and drank them at the same time. Ding! Ding! Two swords fell in front of him as he raised his head and saw George charging toward the fire demon lord. We can't have you sit back now. Brian raised his head and saw the red numbers above the fire demon lord's head. HP, 68%, he immediately recognized the chance they have now. System, put all of my remaining SP into strength. Strength. That's what he needed right now. He also needs others but he can still tank one attack from the fire demon lord with his current body. But, if he can't manage to land powerful hits like before, they will lose and even die. Suddenly, he felt like his mana dropping like crazy. He almost forgot that the amplification was only for a minute. It seems like I bragged about killing this guy in a minute. He didn't want Tempest to use this move again. He was barely able to hold on for teleporting them out of danger. Brian took the mana restoration potion immediately and rushed toward the fire demon lord. At this moment, George was using his frenzied attack from every direction he could find. Shirley immediately started conjuring her yellow lightning sphere. Just like Brian, she also put all of her SP into the additional stat they got. Due to that, now she could use her mana effectively and efficiently. She managed to create four yellow lightning sphere but she didn't shoot them at once. Brian was already heading towards the fire demon lord and the same goes for Dave. As soon as George stabbed the fire demon lord like before, Dave immediately interfered to block the fire demon lord's attack like before but this time, the fire demon lord didn't punch but rather released a stream of flame from his punch. Class Ability Berserker Blood Inside the stream of flame, Dave roared and activated two of his class abilities at once. In an instant, his body suddenly released strange mana. It was flames but scarlet. These scarlet flames started burning those yellow flames. It covered his body as Dave swing his body and slammed the hammer at the fire demon lord's face. Seeing this, Brian's expression changed. He could see the HP on Dave's head dropping like crazy. Damn it. Aw. Oh. At this moment, the fire demon lord screamed. Although his head was smashed, it didn't hurt as much as those flames. They were burning his flames. And, at the same time, George dropped kicked the sword hilt which pierced even more. HP, 35%, seeing those numbers, Brian's eyes turned purple. The mana roared out of him and merged with his swords. He once again condensed the image of a hundred armajura behind him and slashed. Fourth stance. Hundred armajura. Splash. 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 Tempest. George roared from behind. Next to Shirley, Tempest released an enormous amount of mana and mana control. But, his eyes, nose, and ears started bleeding heavily. Teleport. Two men with swords and one burning man appeared in front of him. Yellow lightning sphere. 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 Bang. 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 As soon as they were teleported away, Shirley shot all of her lightning spheres. At this moment, the fire demon lord's HP was down to 10%. When those spheres struck him hard, his HP rapidly decreased. Dave, your mother slept with your father's best friend, and only you know it, George turned his eyes at Dave and roared. His friend HP was almost down to 10%. The flames were still damaging his own body. But when George roared those words, the flames suddenly extinguished and he fell to the ground, unconscious. HP.3% Roar Just when they sighed with relief, a loud roar shook them. They saw the fire demon lord still standing after that attack. Brian's eyes narrowed, as he shouted. Surely, together. Thunderbolt. Yellow lightning. Bang. Bang. 
A blue lightning bolt and a yellow lightning bolt struck the fire demon lord and his eyes finally lost their vision. You have killed fire demon lord, LV.20, you have received 2000 EXP, you cleared the fire demon dungeon, you received 50,000 EXP, you received EXP card, skill upgrade rune, weapon card asterisk 2, 2000 gods coins, a treasure chest has dropped, would you like to open it? Suddenly, several items appeared in front of them including a treasure chest. When Brian saw this treasure chest, a big smile appeared on his lips. Open it. You received. Chapter 66 Lesson for Brian You are listening at NovelFull.audio You received Fire Dragon Ring, Fire Dragon Sword, Fire Dragon Shield, Fire Dragon Wand, and Fire Dragon Blood. Seeing this, a big smile appeared on his lips. Brian was so happy that he has never been this happy before. Because two of his problems were going to be solved right at this moment. True Dragon Body Treasure Item He will get both of them in time. Whoa! Are you serious? Is the so great for completing this Fire Demon Dungeon? Seeing these notifications and the treasure chest in front of them, the entire group was astounded. Hee <laughs> hee. Look at the community chat. Brian giggled and opened the community chat, and others did the same as well. Are you freaking kidding me? I thought Fire Demon Dungeon in hard mode was impossible to complete. It is impossible to complete. How did they do it? Wait, am I seeing this, or does this team has Dragon Rider 97? Holy shit. It is Dragon Rider 97. Wait, doesn't this mean he is only under level 20, F asterisk CK? And, I was trying to hold his thigh and call him boss, you should hold his thigh. F asterisk CKU, I am not holding the thigh of people whose LVL is less than mine, zero. Wait, aren't you only at LVL.14, so what? He is still beneath me, no look. He is at your LVL now. Where did he go? Maybe he already left to hold Dragon Rider 97's thigh, oh. At this moment, Brian had already leveled up. He took the EXP card from the rewards, and with the total of 114000 XP he got from the quest reward and killing the fire demons, it wasn't a big deal. Name Dragon Rider 97 Race Human Level 14 HP, 75 75 Cursed 85% Stamina, MP 75 75 XP 220-327680 Class Warlock O. Str 105 slash AGI. 75 slash VIT. 75 STM. 75 slash INT. 75 slash MAGIC. 50, Warlock, Active Abilities, Warlock. Cursed Hands, LV.1, Passive Abilities, Warlock. Mental Fortitude, LV.1, Skills. Dragon Rider 97 Sword Art, LV.5, Shadow Escape, LV.5, Slaughtering Crows, LV.5, Thunderbolt, LV. 5, SP, 10 Gods Coin. 1087. Inventory. Boar Bones, 2 Picks, Token for Sub, Class, Healing Potions, 8, Alright. I have taken the EXP card, Shirley took the skill upgrade rune, George and Dave took weapon cards, and Tempest took the gods' coins. Now, let's divide the rewards from the treasure chest. Brian spoke while looking at the treasure chest with glowing eyes. Um. Brian, can we talk for a minute? Shirley proceeds to ask while hesitating. Brian turned around and looked at their faces. It was kinda gloomy but he understood why. He sighed. I'm really sorry. I should have told you that but I was afraid you wouldn't accept it, especially after I told you that death is a big deal here. We know that. We understood your concern but this is a team. We are a team. In a team, you shouldn't hide things when it concerns the whole team. 
If you had told us before, we would have brought a bunch of potions, weapons, and other things to keep us alive. But, we thought this was a normal dungeon so we didn't bring anything. It was really risky. George spoke with a gloomy expression. He liked Brian and didn't mind this lie but he was afraid that Brian will continue to do whatever he wants in the future. Look. I don't care if you know a lot of stuff about this game. I don't care if you are cheating or not. You being with us is helping us but if you want to put us a risk, at least you can tell us beforehand. We are not the kind of people who expects good thing without working hard. We have already received a lot of benefits from you but we don't want you to have secrets when you go into a dungeon with us. Dave spoke with a bland face. Tempest looked at Brian but didn't speak a word. You can also tell me what you think, kid. Brian sighed. Tempest finally gathered some courage and spoke, Mr. Brian, please don't hide anything from us. Brian sighed and spoke. I will not hide things from you. I'm sorry. I am in the middle of the quest and my quest increased the difficulty without letting you guys know. I had to cross this dungeon soon and you guys are the people I trusted the most, so I didn't want you to leave. If only I had been a little more sincere. I'm sorry. Hearing his words, four of them remained silent for a moment. Well, one time is one time. Let's go and take the rewards from the treasure chest. Dave patted Brian's shoulder and rushed in front of the treasure chest. Even after you said the consequences of dying in the game world, I will still put my life at risk while I am on this team. I want to trust everyone and that includes you. So, don't hide the truth next time. George spoke with a calm expression and finally walked away. I have been playing with them for a while. While outside, I have a family. But here, I have them. You can't keep the family strong by hiding things from them. Shirley also gave a statement and walked away but she was kindly smiling. Finally, it was Tempest's turn. Brian stared at Tempest waiting for his words. Mr. Brian. Um. When will you invite me to your home? Brian was stunned by this question, then followed it with laughter. Don't worry, I will invite you after I finish my quest. Hearing his words, Tempest's eyes shone and he hurriedly spoke. Then, I will wait for your invitation. All right. Let's divide this. George loudly spoke while standing in front of the treasure chest. It was quite a big treasure chest. There were red armor, a red sword, a red ring, a potion bottle with blood inside it, and a red wand. Everyone looked at Brian. Although they were a bit unhappy with Brian hiding the difficulty, they also knew the best way to distribute these things would be to give them to Brian. Unless there is a huge difference in distribution, they could rely on Brian's knowledge for this. Brian nodded his head and walked in front of the treasure chest. Actually, this is not hard. These five items actually have the same worth and can be distributed just as you all need. For example, George is a warrior class and he needs a sword. Having a red dragon sword which is also a treasure item can be a huge boost. Dave is a barbarian with a berserker class. Having the armor that can protect his body would be the best item for him. It is also a treasured item. The wand obviously goes to Shirley. It is made with the dragon's magic and thus, it will boost her magic by several levels. I have been noticing that she doesn't use the wand a lot. It's probably because it won't help her a lot but with this treasured item, it will be a tremendous help. Tempest needs that dragon blood. As I said before, I have a way to give him a true dragon body which will immensely boost his physical strength, agility, endurance, and stamina. There is another ingredient but I will get it for him. Since I also want to get the true dragon body. As for the dragon ring, I want to keep it. I have some quests that I need to finish on my own and most of those are really difficult. Having a ring that will boost my physical powers and mana will be a tremendous effect. So, what do you guys think? Everyone nodded their heads until Shirley spoke, I feel a little bad about Tempest. All of us got something that we could use in the battle and thus increase our strength. But, 
Tempest didn't get anything at all. Yes, he did get God's coins and dragon blood but those aren't something he can use right now. I was thinking if we could give him something else. N.N.N.O, I am fine. I am happy with these rewards. Besides, I am a support class. Tempest hurriedly tried to explain but Brian interrupted him. I don't have anything right now that I can give him. But, I can make up for this with something else. Well, now that I have this sword, you can take this weapon card and get yourself armor. George gave him the weapon card he received from the quest. Dave also did the same. As for Shirley, she gave him the weapon card as well. Having three weapon cards, Tempest looked at them with confusion. How the hell am I supposed to use these? That's what he wanted to ask. Instead of getting a whole armor, you can get three different parts separately. If you get armor, it will be weak. So, get an upper dot body armor with one card, lower body armor with another card, and a helmet. And, if you spend 200 gods coins in each, you will get the invisible function. Also, get your armor set from the Eden store. As for my compensation, I will give you an idea for increasing your power. As bookworm, you can do anything, like literally anything. So, create a magic circuit inside your blood veins and continuously flow your mana in it. Your mana will evolve the circuit and your true body will also receive this circuit. From then on, instead of focusing on special moves, use your class to create spells like magic spells. I will give you full detail later. So, do you think this is enough for compensation? When he asked, Tempest looked at Brian with his mouth wide open. Hell yeah. Chapter 67 Final Battle for Sub, Class You Are Listening at Novel Full.audio Beep. 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 A young girl with silver hair rushed in front of a blue panel and shouted. Lily, what is going on? What happened? Miss, there was a slight difference in calculation. The amount of fuel we use to create the celestial killing bomb has increased. We do not have sufficient fuel to return. Lily's virtual projection appeared in front of her and spoke. Hearing her words, anger flashed in the young girl as she shouted. Didn't you calculate the amount of fuel we needed to create Celestial Killing Bomb? You are an AI. How could you make such a stupid mistake? Miss, I might be an AI but I am not perfect. I am just a second dot rated model to the AI that Mr. Brian created. Lily replied. Her tone had a little bit of untraceable rage in it. But, she recreated you. How could you still be so useless? The young girl didn't feel that it was her problem. She only blamed Lily. Lily didn't reply. She knew she was just an AI. She has no reason to go against her will. Damn. If I don't get enough fuel, the plan will fail. No, I can't fail. After everything I've gone through, after killing her, I can't fail. I won't fail. There must be a way. Think Ely, think. Ely tried to concentrate but in the next instance, her eyes widened. Yes, I can do that. I have already decided to change the past. There is no reason for me to fear the consequences. Dad must have the ingredients in his lab. I can ask her to get those for me. Oh yeah. I remember today is the day I went to the academy. What time is it? She turned around and looked at the clock. It's already 4 p.m. I guess I can go and find her before she leaves for the bus. She will understand me, right? No, she must understand me. There is no other way. Ely murmured for a while and finally left the room. New gods, Brian had left for the next quest after separating from his team. You completed the second quest, you received the rewards, Quest No. 2. Defeat the Priest of the Temple, 0. Rewards. Plus 3 levels, Class Upgrade Asterisk 2, and Sub, Class Punishment. Quest Failure, looking at the status in front of him, Brian sighed. 
After I finish this last quest, I need to return back. I have spent too long in here. I miss Charlotte and Ely. Damn. I forgot today is Ely's first day at her academy. Damn. I failed to send her off on her first day. Brian felt like a worthless father when he remembered that. The entire way, he kept cursing himself until he finally reached in front of the temple. ENV he took a deep breath, if I remember correctly, I can't use the effects of potions inside the temple. That means I must defeat the priest before I run out of MP or HP. Using the curse ability inside the temple would be a suicide as well. So, I can only rely on my skills. Hopefully, they will work. Finally, Brian took a step forward and walked inside. Just like before, he saw the three priests standing in front of the statue. After he reached a certain distance, three priests turned around and looked at him with big smiles. Hello adventurer, please come with us and greet the Lord Dragon. Brian shook his head and took out his swords. I came to challenge one of you. Please accept my challenge. Hearing his words, the smiles on their faces disappeared. They looked at Brian with an intense gaze and bowed. Adventurer, this is a holy ground of the Lord Dragon. Please come with me. Saying so, they walked towards the back door. Brian hurriedly followed them and eventually reached the front of a massive ground. Adventurer, I shall be your opponent. But, have you remembered the rules of challenging US? The priest in the middle walked toward Brian and asked. Brian nodded his head and said, If I lose, I would have to join the temple and become the priest. Yes. Shall we begin? The priest nodded his head and asked. Brian held his swords tightly. Without even giving him a heads up, Brian rushed toward the priest. He kicks on the ground and raises his body slightly, spinning his swords to conquer the tornado around him. Dragon Rider 97 Sword Art, oh. First Stance. Dragon Twister. It is indeed a powerful attack but nothing that I can't block. The priest nodded his head with acknowledgement and a green mana barrier around him. Dragon Protection. Bang. 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 His swords continued striking the barrier but it didn't even make a scratch. Expand. Bam. With a single word, the priest expanded his dragon protection and struck Brian with it. Brian flew out and landed several meters away from him. But, he quickly got up and released his mana once again. He condensed his mana into his finger and released a bolt of lightning. Thunderbolt. Dragon protection. Bang. The bolt of lightning collided with the dragon's protection but didn't manage to break it. But, he was already aware of it. He dashed towards the priest with his shadow step and channeled his mana into both of his swords. Second Stance Stealth Dragon Claw Bang! Crack! Bang! His sword slashed the dragon's protection and unlike before, he managed to break it. He instantly used his shadow escape to attack again but the priest retreated a few steps out of his sword's reach and chanted another spell. Dragon Claw Priests are very good at spells and these priests have received the dragon blessing. So, each of their spells is not only related to a dragon but also power. When he released the dragon claw, a massive arm of a dragon appeared above him and the arm stretched out its claw. Brian's expression turned gloomy. He took back one of his swords and pierced another sword on the ground. Third Stance Thunder Dragon Stomp, Bang! 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 Dozens of deadly lightning bolts emerged from his sword and struck everything around him. Nearly four lightning bolts struck the dragon claw as well but it didn't manage to break it. Bang! Splash! The claw smashed Brian's head and slapped his body to the ground. The nail stretched his back to the neck and dissipated. Warning! Warning! Warning. Your HP is less than 20%, damn it. A single attack, just a single attack overpowered me. I need to use that right now. 
Brian instantly took out the red ring from his inventory and wore it. You have wielded Dragon Ring, your STR has been boosted by three times, your AGI has been boosted by two times, your HP has been boosted by two times, your MP has been boosted by two times, Dragon Temple detected, oh. Your actions aren't appreciated by the Dragon Ring, Ring has lost two of its bonus stats, your STR has returned back to normal, your AGI has returned back to normal, Brian gritted his teeth after seeing. This is why he didn't use it at first. Because there would be no use except for HP and MP. When he came here for a challenge, he became the enemy of the Dragon Temple. And, the ring was the Dragon Ring. I guess, I have no choice now. I must finish it now and go to the Flood Dragon Dungeon soon. Brian gritted his teeth and released his dark mana. His hand slowly turned purple as he dashed towards the priest. Seeing him coming so fast, the priest cast Dragon Protection. Brian grips both of his swords and released his dark mana, condensing the image of a hundred arms azura behind him. Fourth stance. Hundred arm azura. Bang. 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 Hundreds of swords clashed against the dragon's protection. The priest saw the barrier slowly breaking and instantly cast another spell. Dragon Claw His hundred arms Azura and the Dragon Claw clashed head dot on while Brian used his sword to break the barrier. Bang! Class Ability Cursed Hands He slid in with his shadow escape and touched the body of the priest with his cursed hand. Curse Activated, Dragon Blessing Detected you have received 10x backlash for using curse under dragon's blessing, I don't have time for a backlash. Brian instantly stops behind the priest and turns around. At this moment, his azura phantom was also broken but the dragon claw was still there. He channeled his mana into his swords and swung his upper body. First stance. Dragon twister. Bang. 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 Thud. The dark tornado sucked in both priest and the dragon claw. After a while, the priest fell to the ground with a body full of injuries. You have defeated the priest, you have cleared the quest, you level up, you receive 10 SP, you level up, you receive 10 SP, you level up, you receive 10 SP, please select your sub. Class. All the injuries he had received disappeared when he leveled up three times. He smiled and looked at dozens of figures in front of him. These were the classes he could choose. He scrolled a few times until he finally found that class. Bookworm. You have selected Bookworm as your sub. Class, you have received the strength and weaknesses of your sub. Class, it has been detected that your main class is Warlock, your magic has evolved, you can level up by killing and reading, your physical and magic stats will increase with each level up. Would you like to upgrade your class? Brian looked at these panels with a bright smile on his face. Worth it. The backlash he is suffering right now is worth it. He knows how deadly this backlash is but he can only say. It's F asterisk king worth it. Chapter 68 Ely made a dark matter bomb you are listening at novel full dot audio. Yes, no, Brian quickly removed his thoughts of bliss and clicked on yes. Please select your class, Warlock, Bookworm, without any hesitation, he clicked on the Warlock. Your class has been upgraded, you have unlocked a new active ability. Hell Flames, you have unlocked a new passive ability. Dark Blessing, would you like to upgrade your class? Yes, no, when another panel appeared, he once again clicked yes. Please select your class, Warlock, Bookworm, this time. He selected Bookworm otherwise he would have to wait till he reaches LVL.25 to unlock the second ability. 0. Your class has been upgraded, you have unlocked a new active ability. Summon, you have unlocked a new passive ability. Speed reading, finally, no new panel appeared in front of him. Brian was satisfied with all that hard work he has put into the Fire Demon dungeon and the sacrifice he made in this battle. Thinking of sacrifice, his eyes narrowed as he opened his status. Name. 
Dragon Rider 97, O. Race. Human Level. 17 HP, 180-180, Dragon Ring 2X, Cursed. 55% Stamina, MP 180-180, Dragon Ring 2X, XP. 220-327680 Class. Warlock STR 120, plus 180, slash AGI. 90, plus 90, slash VIT. 90 STM. 90 slash INT. 90 slash MAGIC. 100, Warlock, Active Abilities, Warlock. Cursed Hands, LV.2, Hell Flame, LV.1, O. Active Abilities, Bookworm. Creation, LV.1, Summon, LV.1, Passive Abilities, Warlock. Mental Fortitude, LV.1, Dark Blessing, LV.1, Passive Abilities, Bookworm. Enhanced Memory, LV.1, Speed Reading, LV.1, Skills. Dragon Rider 97 Sword Art, LV.5, Shadow Escape, LV.5, Slaughtering Crows, LV.5, Thunderbolt, LV.5, SP, 40 God's Coin. 1087 Inventory. Boar Bones, 2 Picks, Healing Potions, 8, Just As I Thought. 55% Stamina Left. Even if my stamina returns to full, I can only use 55% of my total stamina. And, this is even worse for my body in a real dot life. Damn. Can I even stick more than an hour in a bed with such low stamina? Brian was frustrated seeing this. After helplessly sighing for a moment, he looked at the priest who was now healed by another priest. But, they were glaring at him with hatred. Before he was a normal player but now he was the servant of darkness in their eyes. Brian sighed and left without saying goodbye. After he came out, two more notifications appeared in front of him. Your STR has been boosted by three times, your AGI has been boosted by two times, seeing this, he sighed. He was happy that he got his dragon ring effects back. Now that I think about it, not only did I reach level 17 but also got a lot stronger than before. I think I can stay with Charlotte and Ely for a week before playing intensely. But then again, I have to clear the Flood Dragon dungeon to get what I want. I still have 55% of my total stamina. I can lay low for a while. In the meantime, I need to figure out a perfect strategy to use Bookworm class efficiently with Warlock class. Originally, I had a plan for Shaman class. Now, I need to make some changes. Anyway, I should leave now. Log out, o.org without wasting any time, he logged out of the game. His consciousness returned back to his mind and he opened his eyes. He opened the pod and slowly walked out of it. Beep one beep. 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 He frowned upon hearing the alarm. He dashed towards the computers and saw Ely typing on the keyboard while Charlotte standing next to her with a worried expression. Then, his eyes fell on a small purple ball under the five mechanical arms. What's going on? Why are you creating a dark matter bomb with such instability? Brian frowned as he asked while rushing next to her. When he reached there, Ely turned around. She had big tears falling down her cheeks. When she saw Brian, she jumped into his embrace. Weya. Wa. Sorry, Daddy, I mess up, Weya. Brian was shocked when he saw her crying. He instantly understood the situation. Ely didn't create the bomb knowingly. His eyes trembled. He hurriedly pushed Ely to Charlotte's embrace and took a seat. Lily, activate all defense systems in case anything goes wrong, tell me the properties of the bomb. Use the dark matter stabilizer to change the frequency of the dark matter. Recalibrate the energy output and change the output of dark matter back to 3.5 ounces, suddenly, a small hand clutched his sleeve. He turned around and saw Ely looking at him with a teary face. Her arms were wrapped around Charlotte's neck. 
Brian smiled and patted her head. It's okay, sweetie. We will talk later. Daddy needs to stabilize this thing. Turning around, he looked at all the information Lily gave him. Then, he turned around and looked at Ely with suspicion but he didn't think too much and started commanding Lily. Lily, activate the dark matter container. Use the function T.235 and stabilize the bomb. After commanding her, Brian finally turned around and spread his arm. Ely jumps into his embrace and starts crying out loud. It's okay, sweetie. It's normal to create one or two bombs in a lab. But, how did you find out the method? I thought I had locked it inside my private database. Although I sounded easy and sweet, Charlotte noticed some suspicion in my eyes and looked at Ely with confusion. Even she was confused by this. A few minutes ago, she heard the alarm going crazy and rushed down. She saw Ely crying and blaming herself for accidentally creating a dark matter bomb inside the lab. She couldn't blame Ely because she seemed so scared that it was the first time she had seen Ely like this. Ely didn't reply. She just kept sobbing on his arm. She was scared. She was trembling in his arms. Why? Why did I listen to her? I almost killed everyone. I am so foolish. I am such an idiot. I am so stupid, 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 stupid. Ely felt rage when she thought about her but suddenly she remembered a few words and her rage vanished. If you don't want daddy to die in the future, help me. It is the only way to keep daddy alive. She didn't want to believe in her but she knew everything, even the secrets that she hasn't told her mom. Nobody should have known about that except for her. Brian sighed. Ely didn't reply mean something was really off. But, he didn't want to blame Ely. Ely made a mistake because this was something out of her understanding. Using dark matter to create a special fuel that he calls space, time fuel, was one of his secrets and abandoned this project. Space, time fuel was required to time dot travel. But, the entire concept of time travel didn't work and he abandoned this project three years ago. He didn't expect someone to reinitiate this project. The only problem is that he doesn't know who. But, no matter who that person might be, it managed to convince Ely to run this experiment. Brian took a deep breath and looked at Charlotte. You haven't cooked anything, right? Charlotte suddenly smiled and shook her head. All right then, let's go out and eat today. Brian patted Ely's head and slowly pulled her chin up. Look at your daddy. Seeing those eyes dodging to look at him, Brian smiled. Ely took a little more time to adjust. When she looked at him, Brian rubbed her head and said, Don't worry about making mistakes. You are just a kid. No matter how smart you are, you need to live as a kid. And, if you make any mistakes, don't worry, daddy will fix them for you. He will do anything for you, sweetie. Hearing his words, those dried eyes suddenly let out tears once again. She rubbed her arms around him and cried. Mommy, I broke this while playing. Can you help me fix it? Ely, how many times have I told you? You need to fix your mistakes by yourself. But mommy, that Ryan asked his mother to fix his toy and she did it. Ely, you and Ryan are people from different worlds. He is just a son of a maid. You are the daughter of the smartest mind in this world and also the strongest person in the world. Mommy, is that why you married daddy? Because he is the smartest man. Of course not. But, you don't need to know this now. Go and fix it yourself. I am busy right now. At that time, she didn't understand the difference between her mother and Ryan's mother. She thought she was special and needs to grow like a special person. Slowly, a smile appeared on her lips as she snuggled her face against his chest. I don't need to be special. I am just happy being my daddy's Ely. But, slowly a trace of helplessness appeared in her eyes. Is this the reason why future me never called her mommy while talking to me? Chapter 69, 
Bonus chapter, Ely was punished you are listening at novelfull.audio. How long? Five more minutes. I just need to put on this makeup. Charlotte's voice rang from the room rendering Brian helpless. He sighed and sat on the sofa. He swiped his watch and virtual protection appeared. Lily, did you find anything about the person who took out Celestial Killing Bomb? Sir, I have run three fun scans in the entire New God system and the only thing I could find that could be traced for this person was one account being deleted from the server. Oh. A hundred dot level account deleted from the server. But, we should still have the DNA sample and the information about that account, right? Did you find anything? Brian asked with a look of excitement in his eyes. Sir, the information I got is kinda hard to believe, Lily replied with her virtual eyes filled with shock. Come on. There is nothing that is hard to believe in science. Everything has a reason and, sir, the person whose account was deleted somehow hacked into the main processor and deleted all the information related to that person. There is not a single trace left. Now, that is indeed to believe. Someone hacked into my account, someone. Isn't this interesting? My daughter just tried to make the space, time fuel. And, someone just hacked my firewall. And, no one on this earth should be able to do it at least not within two more years. So, who do you think is the most suspicious person? Sir, are you pulling my legs? Isn't it obvious? A person traveled back in time and is currently doing everything. But, we do not have any information about that person. So, we do not know who that person could be. Lily rolled her virtual eyes and answered, Zero. You are a little wrong, Lily. Just think about it. Except for me and some core members of UMA, nobody knows about the celestial killing bomb's real use. And, the person also is believable enough to convince Ely. Ely is a smart girl. She wouldn't tamper with the dark matter unless it is really important stuff and the person who convinced her is also very close. Brian speculate as his smile got wider. Sir, can I ask you something? Lily suddenly questioned which made Brian curious. Oh, yes. Why did you decide to be ignorant of her presence and miss Charlotte's feelings? Hearing this question, Brian was stunned for a moment. Then, he smiled and shook his head, you do ask some tough questions. How about you figure this out yourself? I will give you a clue. Why do you think I created the celestial killing bomb? I understand, sir. Lily remained silent for a moment before she realized the situation and nodded her head. You have an ability to choose the best solution from infinite solutions. I trust you got the best idea as to why I did it. Brian smiled and turned around. He was looking at the window. Mom, Dad, is this what being a parent feels like? I don't feel any hate against them anymore. I even accepted Charlotte. Dad, I want to be just like you. I want to be a great father. At this moment, Brian had a big smile on his face. Finally, the door opened and two of them walked out. Charlotte was wearing a high red dress that covers her from her neck to her feet. Her arms were covered with transparent red sleeves. She was wearing black high heels as well. On other hand, Ely was wearing her usual black dress and had a strange gloomy look on her face, oh. Brian instantly understood why. She was waiting all this time for Charlotte to get ready. He couldn't help but laugh while keeping his mouth close. Humph. Ely snorted and walked out of the mansion. Charlotte hurriedly rushed near her while Brian also walked out while commanding. Lily, turn off the secret protocol defense except for the cameras. Yes, sir. With that command, Brian was finally relaxed as he left the mansion. They took the car and went to the biggest hotel in Zone C. For some reason, Brian didn't mind spending money on his daughter and Charlotte. Before, he wouldn't have cared where he eats. But now, he always wants the best for his lover and his daughter. After they reached the hotel, they booked a separate room and ordered some food. 
While waiting, Brian suddenly remembered something and spoke. Charlotte, I forgot something to tell you. I am going to invite someone occasionally to my lab. His name is Nolan. He is a smart kid, currently working on dark matter. And, he can also teach Ely. No, Ely shouted which surprised both of them. She pointed at Brian and said, only daddy is allowed to teach me. All right. All right. Brian rubbed his hair and sighed. By the way, did you make any friends at the academy today? Ely shook her head and said, no, but I did smash a student's face. Daddy, he was teasing me for being a witch. Daddy, do these red eyes make me look like a witch? Of course not. Those eyes only make you beautiful. And, you are a vampire, not a witch. But, did the headmaster call you because of what you did? Brian got a little worried when he heard that she punched a student. Ely didn't speak but rather looked away. Seeing this, Brian suspiciously pulled her chin and asked, Did you get into some trouble? Ely refused to speak but she knew she had to answer no matter how hard she tries to hide. Ding. Dong. Suddenly, the bell rang which widened her eyes. Smirking at Brian, she rushed far from him. Come in. Seeing her behavior, Charlotte chuckled and responded. The waiter came in bringing their orders. After putting them on the tablet, he left. Just when Ely went to eat, Brian pulled her closer and asked. Did you get into trouble? I want to eat. Ely made teary eyes. First, you explain the entire situation, or else, no food for you. Brian strictly replied. Finally, Ely got no choice but to explain. On her first day, she tried to become friends with everyone but the first person she asked was a boy who called her a witch. Ely punched him and knocked him unconscious. Thankfully, it wasn't any fatal injury. Ely was called into the headmaster's office where she barely escaped suspension. But, she now has to take the extra classes about morality, disciple, and power control. These were the classes every student who gets into trouble has to take. And, the worst thing for her is that the boy she punched also needs to take the classes. After hearing her story, Brian didn't control his laughter anymore. He was really happy that his daughter was finally mixing up with the people even if the path is a bit wrong. Finally, they continued eating their food and while they are at it, Charlotte spoke. Brian, I think we should tell Ely about us. I don't want to hide this from her anymore. This sentence completely turned off Brian's mind for a moment. He looked at her with a blank expression. He really couldn't comprehend what she just said. Ding one the spoon on Ely's hand fell on the plate making a sound that woke him up. Look, Ely is already suspicious. I don't want to build a relationship based on lies. I don't want to raise Ely as a caretaker or an aunt. I might not be her mother but I still want to raise her as a stepmother. When Charlotte said that, Ely lowered her head not knowing what she was thinking. Brian suddenly patted her head and shook his head at Charlotte. I don't want my daughter to make any decision now, especially for relationships. But suddenly, Ely shook her head and that threw off Brian's hand. No. Mother and you are totally different. And, I like being with you. At this moment, her hand caught his sleeve as she continued, you don't think of me as someone special. You love me as your daughter even though we just met. When I came to you, I was afraid that you won't like me or even outright hate me. But, you came out of the life you wanted to live just for me. You became what you had left behind. You did all that for me. Daddy, if she makes you happy, then I don't want to be a spoiled kid and stop you. But, can you please give the mother a chance? When she asked that, she almost cried while looking at her. Brian smiled at her and pulled her into his embrace. You are wrong. You are always special in my heart. Because you are my daughter. And being your father, you will always be special in my eyes. As for the issues about your mother, are you sure you are asking the correct person, Bedo Rem when he said that, Ely's eyes widened. 
she slowly crawled out of his embrace and moved near Charlotte. But before she could speak, Charlotte put her finger on her lips and smiled. I will give her a chance if she is willing to be a good wife and a good mother but if she fails you and Brian, I will stand against her. A surprise bonus chapter for you guys. If you are enjoying this book, then don't forget to vote golden tickets you have accumulated. It motivates me to write more. And, I might start uploading two chapters a day from tomorrow. Chapter 70 New Threat Conqueror of Three Galaxies, Emperor Wraith You are listening at NovelFull.audio Young Eleanor stood in front of the mansion and spoke. Sleepy Dragon Awaken Voice recognized. All systems are online. Hello Miss Eleanor, how can I help you? Deactivate all defensive mechanisms and turn off all cameras. Yes, Mississippi. Open the main gate. With her commands, the main gate opened up. With a big smile on her face, young Eleanor walked inside. Open the door. Young Eleanor continued walking inside the house and stopped a few steps away from the place the elevator emerges. With another command, the floor split apart and an elevator emerges in front of her. She enters the elevator and goes straight down to the lab. After she walks out of the elevator, a trace of sadness appears in her eyes. Oh, it still looks the same. She walks towards the main computer section and looked around. She saw a giant transparent container containing dark dot colored energy inside it. She walks in front of it and the bracelets in her hand changes into a syringe. She pierces the container with it and activates the syringe. Suddenly, she pauses for a moment and turned around. Lily, show me all the records that Daddy has searched about Lucy Bathory. When she said that, nearly dozens of panels appeared around her. Each panel showed different information, some were text, some were videos, and some were just photos. She clenched her fists and took a deep breath, zero. Daddy, it is not worth it. Hopefully, little me will soon forget about her. Because she doesn't deserve your affection. At this moment, her face was covered with tears. Sob. Sob. Why? Why is it so important to you, mommy? Why did I have to bear all this? At this moment, she had nothing but a broken heart. After a while, she wiped away her tears and a serious expression appears in her eyes. Daddy, I will accomplish my mission. Your daughters won't disappoint you. At the same time, she had completely absorbed the entire fuel. But, she didn't stop there. She changed another bracelet in her other hand and inserted the same dot-looking energy inside the container. Daddy has already dropped the space-time project. He shouldn't be able to find out. And, even if he did, I would be gone by that time. Sleepy Dragon Code Nine Dragon Rules The Nine Heaven Ancestral Dragon Mode Activated Lily's voice rang from the house. Dot, permanently erase all the information from the moment I entered this house. Code. Divine Dragon. Yes, Mississippi. Your information will be erased in two minutes, 50.9 seconds. Without any hesitation, young Eleanor rushed out of the mansion. In less than one minute and 15 seconds, she was already outside the house. She tapped her bracelets and a hoverboard appeared in front of her. She stepped on it and tapped her bracelet once again. Her body slowly turned invisible. Inside the mansion, Lily emerged on her virtual projection. She had a sneaky smile on her face, oh. Sir was indeed correct. It seems like someone continued space, time project. But, sadly, they don't know the consequences of tampering with time. I guess nobody can be smarter than Sir. This technology is amazing. The invisibility that covers up the traces completely. I can't track her even with all my functioning. I wonder what Sir has planned for this. He did give her the full authority over me. Beep. Beep. Hearing this tone, she bitterly smiled, I guess I have gone against the instruction for too long. 
Anyway, Secret Protocol has activated the cameras. Let's follow the instruction. The next second, her body disappeared and reappeared in the same place. New information has been recorded in Secret Protocol. Sigh. Unfortunately, even I can't access the Secret Protocol. I guess I have to wait until Sir returns home. Inside the hotel, Brian, Charlotte, and Ely were talking while eating. This time they weren't talking about anything serious but rather just listening to Ely's school adventures. After finishing their meals, they finally returned to the mansion. Charlotte took Ely back to bed while Brian went straight to his lab. Welcome back, sir. Did anything unusual happen, Lily? Brian smiled and asked. Lily's virtual projection appeared in front of him as she shook her head and said. Nothing unusual happened, sir. But, I do receive some information in the secret protocol. Would you like to open it? Of course. Why else do you think I kept the secret protocol in my house? Brian smirked and commanded. Secret protocol code. Heaven-defying dragon, Lily nodded her head as a new panel appeared in front of him. Accessing secret protocol. Sir, I have found a new video. Opening it. With her command, the video file opened. It was the entire video from the outside of the mansion to the lab. He saw a girl nearly at the age of 16. This girl was none other than Ely but not Ely from the current time but rather from the future. After watching the entire video, Brian touched his chin as a serious expression appeared in his eyes. Hmm. It was a good thing I gave her the master control or else she wouldn't feel secure crying in front of the cameras all around the mansion. It seems matter has gotten a lot serious in the future. It seems like I died. But, it shouldn't be possible, sir. Unlike the strongest person in the world who tries to kill you, there should no one who can destroy that protection. Lily spoke with a bit of confusion in her tone. You are right. If I use the Heavenly Dragon Guard, nobody should be able to kill me head dot on. Oh course, I can't kill anyone either. But, what if the person who killed me in the future is the strongest person? Lily looked puzzled as she asked, but sir, isn't she trying to win your affection? From all the information we have gathered, it seemed like she is trying to create a positive image of herself in your mind. Why would she kill you? That's what we need to find, Lily. That's what we need to find. And something is bothering me even more. Whoever completed my space, time theory should know the consequences of time travel, but still decided to do it. Was it to kill Ely? If so, this plan is quite brilliant. I have to act fast and send her back to her timeline before the time core spots the tampering of space. Time. Lily, analyze the entire video and find out her energy radiation. Use the full control system to extend the energy radiation detector around the world. Find her as soon as possible. Brian's mood only got serious as he asked her. Yes, sir. Lily replied and disappeared. Brian turned around and sat on his chair. In any case, I need to divert the attention of the Time Corps until I send her back. And more importantly, Yawn, why am I feeling so tired and sleepy so soon? Sigh. It seems like this is my limit for now. A 40.5% drop in stamina in the real world is really a hassle. After I settle things with the future Ely, I should finish the Flood Dragon Dungeon and cure this weakness. By the way, send my address to Nolan Craig and invite him over. I want him to make me a new weapon. Brian slowly stood up and took the elevator. He returned to the room and saw Charlotte laying next to Ely. At this moment, she was simply watching over Ely. When he entered, she suddenly reacted and said, You are early. Yeah. I feel like I should spend more time in bed. Brian nodded his head and slowly changed his clothes. When he finished changing clothes, he noticed Charlotte wasn't speaking. He turned around and saw her face blushing red. She was pointing at Ely. Brian rolled his eyes and walked near her. 
He flicked her forehead and said, What are you thinking? I mean I should sleep with my family in the bed rather than in a pot alone. Saying so, he walked all the way to the other side and get in the bed. Ely was sleeping in the middle while they were on the sides. Charlotte shifted her body closer and so did he. They embraced each other while squeezing little Ely in the middle and slept. Next morning, Daddy, wake up. I am going to school. Ely caught his hand and shook him a few times until Brian finally opened his eyes. What time is it? It's nine already. How long are you planning to sleep? Ely pouted in front of him. She was wearing a matte black coat and a matte black skirt. Inside the coat, she was wearing a white shirt and a small tie. Her hair was tied into two buns and she was wearing a bag. Hearing her words, Brian slowly stood up while yawning. Lack of stamina is really affecting me. Ten hours of sleep. I haven't slept that long for four years. Daddy, your assistant guy is waiting outside in the hall. Get ready. My bus has already arrived. I am leaving, bye. The little girl rushed out of the room looking a little bit excited. Brian chewed the empty air in his mouth and yawned once again. Beep. 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 Sir, I have just received a message from two million light years away, from Andromeda Galaxy. Can I open it now? What the hell? Open it, open it now. Sir, the message is in a voicemail. Playing the voicemail. Earthling, this is Emperor Wrath speaking, conqueror of three galaxies, savior of ten galaxies, and the leader of Scion Army. My son, Junior Wrath is arriving at your planet in probably 30 minutes, he is sent there for experience so I won't make things difficult for you. But, if his life is ever threatened, my Scion Army of 10 million Omega, level space fighters will decimate your solar system. I have sent all the information that you need in the next mail. Take good care of my son and also, share your technology with your world. They are hundreds of years backward than you. After hearing this mail, Brian pinched his cheek. F asterisk CK. This is not a dream.